tell us a little bit about what is mud and what motivates you to create mud. Okay, so mud, multi-user dungeon. Um, this was um, a text-based game because Back in the, I mean, we were working on teletypes at the time, so it wasn't. It, we didn't even have screens, so you can't have graphics um, on on paper um, that's being printed in capital letters as you're going along. So <clears throat> it was a text-based game. Um, it just like um, interactive fiction, described the um, where you were, described everything that was happening as if someone was giving you um, an account. So <clears throat> when you are standing on a narrow road between the land and whence you came to the north and south of the, are a pair of majestic footholds um, where a cloud of mist obscures the path, you know, this sort of stuff. So it describes where you are. Um, you give it commands, you just say what you want to do. So you're typing in text <clears throat> and, the, and then it explains what's happening in text. So N, north, um, and then um, it might say, um, dense forest uh, the, there is a zombie here oh, okay um kill zombie with sword um you attack the zombie then the fight goes on and then um if you think you're gonna lose you flee if you don't you stay and win um or it might be that you arrive there and then the zombie walks away or it might be that you arrive there and there's another player there and then they decide to attack you or they decide to follow you or they decide to talk or they ignore you um when Mud started out. Um, there were very few computer games in general available. Um, only rich kids had home computers at that time, um, and so for many players, it wasn't just their first um, virtual world. It was their first computer game that they'd ever played, and it's hard to describe to today's players what that was like, um, because. Well, for for one well, question, today. it's uh, how, how do you make it multiplayer? Is it through the internet we know it as today, or is it an internal network? How does it work no, to be multiplayer? When, okay, so when it was written, it was written under a time-sharing system. Um, I mean, I go into some technical details here, if you like. So this is a Deck System 10 uh, mainframe, which is a beautiful architecture. Um, the main science computer of the decade, um, well, for probably about 20 years, it, um, uh the the memory uh, so under a time sharing system um there's one central processing unit and all the people using it are connected to the same computer so um uh what happens is i issue a command or something or i tell the computer to do something it allocates me some time then after it's done a bit it swaps me out goes on to the next person after a bit it swaps so it it manages its time it shares the, the the central processing unit time based on all the different things that it has to do now um the architecture of the deck system 10 um had what was called a high segment and a low segment now if you imagine someone who um say there's a class of students and are all right using a, a tech a, an editor or something so they're, they're all running the same program, but they've got different data because they're, they're all running um, Tico or whatever, or Ed or whatever the program was called at the time. Um, so that's the same for all of them, um, but the data, their actual thing that they're write, typing will be different because some of them will be writing programs, some will be writing reports, or some of them will be um, just trying to figure out how the what the commands are trying to get out of Tico it wasn't exactly easy. Um, the so for the the way it was set up then the high segment was shared so everybody who was using the editor all ran the same program so that could stay in memory all the time wouldn't have to be swapped in and out all they'd need to know is where was I and then carry on doing it. The low segment had all the data in and that was individual to each user. So the high segment, you didn't want to be writable because if anyone could write to it, then that would change the, the code for everybody. The low segment, you did want to be writable because that wasn't shared. So you had non-writable but shared and then writable but not shared. With MUD, you took the, writable, the um, unwritable high segment and made it shareable so you could write to it. So we could change 
the code. But we didn't change code. What we did was we allocated a huge amount of that, fill it full of zeros, and wrote into that. So we didn't overwrite our code, but we did overwrite an area. And that meant that anybody who's written the program, the data was the same because it was always in memory, always stored in the same um, area. Does this mean in the early days that the people had to be at least in the university to play together or? Um, we had two sorts of users, which whom we called internals and externals. Internals were ones who were logged into a, a terminal on the university's uh, machine. Uh, so on the university campus, so they just ran, uh, logged in uh, under their username, ran our program, and then they were in the same game. Mm-hmm. Other people connected to us through um, university networks. Well, not even university ones. Um, they were all experimental. Um, uh, there was a system in America called um, ARPA, uh, came out of the Department of uh, Advanced Research Projects Agency. It was, um, so um, that had, I don't know, maybe 20 um, universities and um, companies attached to it. Uh, there were some in the UK that were attached to it. Um, and there was also a UK network, which we were attached to um, because we were close to the British Telecom Communications um, Centre. Well, British Telecom now, it was the post office back then. Um, so uh, because we were connected to that, we could use that to connect through to somewhere like Imperial College in London. And through there, we could connect to the USA. And then we'd log in at MIT or something and say, hi, try this. And then somebody would go the other way bounce back and then log into our um, site and then they then they could run mud because we provided a free login for them so that's how it worked Uptown,